Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the Zen Master. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Well, wonderful. Thanks for asking. Um, well, we'll talk about this later, but I've, I've got some crazy story for you, Mike. Okay. Uh, we've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm well. Happy to be here, Mark. It's great to see you. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield from Sin City. What's going on? It's uh, all good, man. All good. Happy to be on the show. Good to see you. And last but not least, you know him. You love him. The brain. The professor. Your flight school Sherpa. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net. Landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything. InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Let's let's just skip the pleasantries and get right into it. I bet if I had to guess, in the past, let's say 24 months, maybe 36 months because of COVID, when you guys were on some kind of vacation or you're at a dinner party, you're talking to a friend, somebody mentioned to you when you told them, Oh, you buy and sell raw land. Oh, have you guys ever bought in XYZ? Let's just throw out some cool spots. Costa Rica. Mexico, uh, Belize, uh, Canada, right? Where else would somebody mention at a party? Oh, do you buy? Would you buy land Australia, in Australia? Australia. So any why island? We, any island? Let's let's delve deep into this topic. And because he loves going first, and is a avid traveler, let's start with the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Mike Zeno. Have you ever considered buying internationally? And if so, would you buy internationally? Well, most recently we were in Aruba and I'll tell you, I'd like to buy some land there. And I'm, but I was questioning some of the people, you know, uh, we were walking on the beach one night. We happened to come across, come across a group of people. And, you know, one guy ran the casino, a couple people owned restaurants and there was a realtor there. So we were talking to them, I guess they were indicating that we as Americans could do it. And so I do love it there, but I don't think about buying it in a sense of uh, buying it and flipping it. I wouldn't mind to have a piece of it for myself. So there's one I've, I've had an opportunity in the past to do some investing in, in Mexico and I did look into it a little bit, but it just started to get layered upon layered upon layered. It was like, and then there were like some local tribes involved that you had. And, and it was just like, it was just, so it quickly uh, changed my mind and I, and I uh, very quickly retreated back to the USA and just continued to do business. So, I mean, I, I love the idea. I think that there's definitely um, some some good money to be made there. It's sort of, to me, like a unique niche. Like, you know, we always look at the low-lying fruit or when we buy land. We don't look for people that have properties in probate or there's issues like that. We want the simple one person owns it or two people, they're alive. They can, but, you know, if you want to go the probate route, and, you know, and separate yourself from other investors and learn all about that. I'm sure you get a lot of deals, but we usually like the quick and efficient deal. So um, I guess I'm relating that to the complexities of investing overseas or, or in another country. So although I've looked at it, um, I quickly retreated due to the perceived complexities. And maybe that's me not being very, you know, uh, I don't know, dedicated to it, but there's so much money to be made here in what we do that I'm content right now. Okay. Okay. That was a, a thorough answer. And there's something about you saying retreating to the US that made me think of, you know, your Boston roots of, you know, retreat. I'm missing <laughs> no. the pun. No, it, I must be slow on the curve today. No, the, the American Revolution, like we had to retreat. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, I know there's a Paul Revere joke in there somewhere. I just don't have it. Yeah, the land anyway. investors are coming. I don't know. <laughs> there it is. There, there it is. All right. Uh, Eric, the technician, Peterson. Have you ever been tempted? And have you ever bought land internationally? Would you ever buy land internationally? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'm kind of with Mike on this one. It's it's attractive, right? Because the world's big. You know, it's so much more than the United States, but 
what we're able to do right here in our own country is, I mean, for me right now, honestly, it's, it's more than enough. Like we've got plenty of land to buy. We've got plenty of land to sell. So, you know, I'm not going to say that, that going to Canada, going to Mexico, going to some other country would be a bad decision, but certainly it's, um, it's just a different process, right? There's going to be different legal issues you're going to encounter. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you can't do a land contract in, in Canada or in Mexico or, or wherever, maybe, um, you know, there's different issues with, with how you take ownership of the property and, and so on and so forth. So there, there's most definitely a, a big learning curve there, almost to the extent of, of kind of starting over in land, right? Like in this, this new place. Um, but I do think that for the right person that wants to go down that path and, and invest the time to, to learn and kind of work through all that stuff, um, you can certainly carve out a, a very reasonable niche, I'm sure. Um, but it just hasn't been something I've gone after because I think, like I said, I think we've got plenty of land here and, and everything is, is working well under that strategy. So, you know, maybe someday in the future that'll change. But um, for now, I'm just sticking with the U.S., Okay. All right. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield, ever been tempted? Uh, all the time. All the time. Um, you know, I like to travel. And like you said, every time I come back from these trips, I think it's pretty normal. I mean, you go spend a week in Hawaii, and by the end of that week, you're going to be on Zillow, right? You're going to be looking at, hey, what can I buy? What can I afford out here? And, you know, if you're looking in that state, you're going to be disappointed regardless of where you're visiting from, because your dollar doesn't go very far. But, you know, you start looking at, you know, Mexico, I, I, being close to the border there, we spent a lot of time, a lot of summers down there. And I still go down there frequently with my family and we enjoy vacationing. It's a slower pace of life. And every single time we're down there, I come home and I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Maybe not land. You know, it wouldn't be necessarily the same approach that I have with the properties that we own in the United States. But I think to myself, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I haven't said that I won't do it. It's just every time it comes down to actually pulling the trigger, something else comes up. And uh, I realized that, you know, maybe I just want to rent a place or stay in the nice hotels and do that twice a year instead of actually owning something. So I like to move around and that's kind of been my philosophy on it. But to say that I'm not interested would be a lie. Uh, like Eric and like Mike, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to international properties. And, and I try to stay in my lane. And if I were to try to apply this business model to something that you know goes into a different country, I'd need help. And so for that, I'd need to do some research and I'd have to expand my knowledge and my education. And so right now, as far as looking to maybe branch out into a new country for my business purposes, the answer is I'd love to, but I don't see it ever happening because we are experts at one thing and that's staying in our lane, doing what we do really well. I, I really love that phrase too, staying in your lane. In fact, if I ever mentioned investing outside of my expertise, we just like, like I wish like I have like a bumper sticker or a, like something on my desk to just like scream at me, stay in your lane. Yeah, we got to put the blinders it, on. Put the liners on because it makes so much sense, but it, we're so easily distracted. And I, I, I 100% agree with you. Um, and there's really no advantage typically. Like if we're looking at property in Mexico, wouldn't the locals have a huge advantage? Like why are we seeing that deal? It's, it's just complexity, right? Do our Does our process work down there? Right. And right, right. The one thing that we've become really good at is following a recipe, right? Doing things in a repetitive motion. And the moment we start to introduce complexity, we, we start to introduce new variables, that system will break. And if that system breaks, you know what that means? It means I got to do more work. And am I willing to do more work simply to say that I own land in a different country? Or should I just stay in my lane and do what I do 
it doesn't break, it doesn't have excitement or, or any sort of surprises attached to it. So for the most part, I'm staying put. Yeah. And by the way, we might need to, to um, help Scott Todd understand what it means to stay in your lane. He's probably like, what, do, what, what's, what is this thing you're talking about a lane? So as a pilot, we should just say, you know, Scott, you need to stay in your airspace. Would that your be designated right? altitude. Do you st- yeah, Scott, you stay in your designated altitude. But, you know, being in the exotic area, you're almost in a foreign country in Florida. What Are you tempted ever? A foreign country, Florida. <laughs> You know, um, like I get lots of requests uh, on through Landmoto for like, are you guys in Canada? Uh, can I do this in, can I owner finance land in wherever? And I'm not talking about like, can you, can you do what we do? I'm talking about people that are looking for land in other countries, Europe and all this other stuff. And, you know, I think that what everybody else said on here is, is relevant because yeah, I mean, you go you go somewhere and you're like, oh, it'd be kind of cool to own some land here. Um, I mean, I went to Mexico once and uh, what was it uh, uh, Cozumel? I'm on you know Cozumel there, and we're driving, and I'm looking at all this open land there, and I'm wondering like, mm, who owns this land, right? Like, how come it's not developed? It's all vacant land. What gives? Like, this is this is what we do. And then, you know, then you think about it, you're like, all right, well, then I got to go find the people and I got to create systems for all that stuff. And my systems work well here. And you know what? I got all this land in America I can deal with. And so you take the path of least resistance. And would I make more money doing Cozumel? I don't know. Right. Like, it's just like, am, am I struggling with what I'm doing here? I'm not. So why, why shake it up? And Mark, I think that that's also one of the things that, you know, you and I and uh, I, I know Tate, we're, we're always getting offers for, you know, hey, partner with me on this multifamily deal or put money in for multifamily. And then I look at the yields and I'm like, yeah, I'm not loving it. Right. Like, you know, someone's like, oh, you're going to make, you know, 20 percent, you know, return on your money cash on cash. And I'm like. Oh, okay. I, aren't you impressed? I'm like, not, not really. You know, we had, you and I were on a call once where a guy's like, you know, we make 30%, we will pay you 30%. And we are like, Oh, okay. I mean, you know, I can do 70 over here or 30 with you, which one do I want to do? So I think that if you have something that works, why, why try to change it up? If it's not working or if it's dying, well, maybe, Look for something different, but if what you're doing is working for you, stay stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Say. Stay in your airspace. Stay at your defined altitude. It's it's true, and I think that if you're listening to this, you know you've got to understand how big the U.S. land market is. I mean, it's massive. It's just billions of acres. In the same way that if you invest in the stock market, there's so many U.S. companies. Like, why wouldn't you invest in Starbucks if you're a coffee drinker? Why would you go start looking at what's the hottest coffee place in China if you're not always in China observing the market, so to speak? Well, you could say, you know, you could make lots of arguments for it. We can make lots of arguments why raw land would be a great investment in some of these more exotic areas. But at the end of the day, we're just not there all the time. We don't know the players. We don't know the laws. We don't know the intricacies. And do I want to create another job for myself, learning all of it, when I've already created enough systems and processes to buy in the United States, which has, as of right now, as of this recording, a stable government. So, you know, we're not taking government risk, legal risk, all those types of things. Mark, 1.9 million. You know what that is? What? Uh, billions, right? 1.9 billion. Apologize. 1.9 billion. The big 1. number, right? I, I I would assume that is the debt of this country per second. Is the acreage in the oh. continental United States? Oh, okay. That's 1.9 billion acres. So trust me, we can't buy it all. And only about six percent of America is developed, by the way, guys. Six percent. So I was telling you, six percent of the land is raw land. What does that tell you? 
I'm sorry, is, is, is developed is land. Developed, right. So 94% is, is vacant land in this country. That's a lot of vacant land guys. Even Zeno cannot buy all that land. Like at some that, point he would run out of money. That, that's what I'm that mean that when people ask us, Oh, are we going to buy all the land? Uh, you know, uh, are you afraid we train people? They billions. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. It's I, uh, it's impossible. Um, yeah, absolutely. I was I was on uh, a call the other day. With, uh, I've never done this before, but I, I got invited to speak at Intel virtually. And so there was a, a Zoom call with like a bunch of Intel engineers who knew nothing about raw land. And I just kind of went through the model. I'm like, do I have the best passive income model? Or do we have the best passive income model? I'm like, put it in the chat. And like, I'm like, anyone disagree? It's because of Scott's point, like it, it, no one did. And so I, I was kind of shocked that no one was like, well, what about something like, you know, buying in the metaverse, which by the way, I think that could be a round table podcast as far as, you know, buying in the, in the, the metaverse. What do you guys think? Can we do that? You know, next time. Terrible investment. We already did something like that. Oh, we Stand did talk in my about lane. that once. What's that? Didn't- did we talk about that one time? Did we talk yeah, about, we talked about something like that. I'm yeah. staying in my lane. Yeah. We, 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 we've already nixed that topic. That's a no deal. It's not good. I, I mean, I, it's, it, it could be an interesting topic, especially like, who, who, who here's got an Oculus? Do you guys Mark. have an Oculus? <laughs> nope. Oh, that hurt. Mark's driving over the cliff, man. He really is. Just right. ask Tate to remind you. There it is. I mean, I prefer the the stay in my lane instead of the the you know oh, the say. slap. The, no, you know you got no, no slap. slap. I got the no slap. So I want to uh, go now and transition to Scott Todd for his tip of the week: a website, a resource, a book, something else actual for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But before he does that, let's just give a shout out to Flight School, who is our sponsor this week. Learn to start investing in raw, undeveloped land. Start building a passive income with as little as $1,000. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa, who's done it thousands of times. Oh, yeah. And that tuition ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed you're going to make it back 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? <laughs> no, we can't hear you, Scott. You're on mute. That's by design. I think he's... And that's yeah. how you do it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you listening, Scott literally put himself on mute and gave a, a worded tip of the week and then put himself off of mute. It's much funnier on video. Actually, the- okay, actually, I'll, I'll pull it out now. So look, do yourself a favor. This is a, this is going to sound very simple when I say it, and you're going to be like, well, yeah, no, duh. But you know what? In the long term, it, it really, really is hard. It's a hard thing to do. And I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Personally, I know other people on this call, the coaches would agree with me. And that is stay laser focused on what you're doing. You got to tune out the shiny object syndrome. It's always going to be there. You're going to hear people say, oh man, I'm selling properties right and left. Okay. I used to do that on the, um, on the, 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 uh, mastermind call, right. That, that Tate runs every Wednesday for the coaching clients. I'd hear people say, oh man, I sold six properties this week. And I'm like, well, where are they? You know, and so then you get shiny object syndrome, even on the areas that you're working and you start to see like other people are having success and maybe you've had a terrible run. I mean, there, there was there was about six week period back a while ago where I made no sales. I'm like I'm talking about like a night uh, 2015. I was like depressed, like everybody else around me was making sales. And I'm thinking like, oh, I'm in the wrong area. Uh, I went a six week stretch with no sales at all. I was embarrassed. I felt defeated. All of these things. And you know what? I just kept marketing. I'm like, I, get, I, I can't control this. All I can control is my marketing. So 
I just kept marketing. And then what happened was they just popped out of something just popped. Next thing you know, I'm pulling out like, you know, 10 sales in a week. It's like, wow, where, where have all you people been? So don't get discouraged. Stay focused on your strategy. I'm not saying that you shouldn't like, if something's not working, try to figure out what's not working, but not major changes and just stay true to what you're trying to do. And when you do that, everything will pop. Just trust the process, trust what you're doing and have faith. And if you're going to make changes, small tweaks, that's all you got to do. It's a, it's, it's a great, great tip um, of the week. And I think this has been uh, a very valuable uh, roundtable podcast. I want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way that we're going to be able to cajole Scott Todd to continue giving out tips of the week is if you do those three favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich. So please do it. It really helps us out. So anyways, uh, to end, Mike Zano, just want you to know, I'm loving doing the cold plunge. Uh, Three minutes, actually, no, seven minutes total uh, in 39 degrees. Nice. It was fantastic. I felt great afterwards. You go in hot water after you just get out and be done. So I, I do, I do, uh, I start in the sauna, then I cold plunge. After the cold plunge, I go to the uh, hot tub after the hot tub for about six minutes. And then I, I end with about three, you know, three minutes in the cold plunge. So do you have the ice? Did you get the one that you can adjust the temperature of the water or do you have to put ice in it? No, Eric Peterson told me I should not do it. And I, I actually go to a, a place here and uh, they have all the equipment. So I don't have to. Oh, it. even better. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like they got the infrared sauna, they've got the hot tub. Uh, for those of you in Phoenix, it's called optimize. Uh, oh, that's awesome. It's awesome. It's really cool. Now I'm jealous. You got the whole, everything laid out for you in sequence. Yeah. And so when you come to visit, we'll, we'll do it. I don't think they have it in Tampa, actually, anything like that. Because <laughs> it's, not, it's not real cutting edge there. <laughs> you might be able to find some, uh, some warm gator-filled water, but nothing real cold. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. All right, are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let's let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.